Kuala Vinaka, my name is Letia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tabua. We love Today FM in Tabua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selina, I'm from Tawenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Hola, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news, trial of alleged sex priest continues. Berka rakes in over $80 million from tax evaders and FRA to monitor contractors and their work. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. Four days into the rape trial of the Jezreel Line of Judah church leader Chona the Kanuto and all the three victims have so far testified to similar accounts. The Kanuto is facing various sexual charges and is accused of raping female members of his own congregation between 2002 and 2015. Shireen Shivan reports. The third victim in this case, who was 16 years old during the time of offense, told the Suva High Court this morning that she was told the cleansing process is sacred. The witness says because of this, she was not allowed to inform anyone about the process. She says the alleged offense took place in Nandera, recalling the day when she went to the pastor with her two other female friends. She informed the court that the pastor told her to sit on the bed next to him and told her he will redeem her by touching her private parts. She further said that the pastor assured that after the redeeming process, she will become a new person. The witness continued, saying the pastor told her other two friends present in the room to close their eyes and start praying while he forced himself on her. She went on to say that the sermon by the Kanauto persuaded her to agree having sexual intercourse with the pastor. The witness was part of the church ministry for two years. Sharin Shivan, FBC News. 231 people have been charged with 522 separate counts of serious sexual offences over the past 13 months. The statistics were released by the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions today relating to the increasing number of formal indictments filed in the High Courts of Fiji. Akusita Thale has more. 246 women, girls and boys have become victims of 522 separate sexual offences starting May of last year to the end of May this year. Out of these, 151 victims were under the age of 18. There was even a report of two infant victims of serious sexual offenses under the age of two. 86 of the offenses occurred in domestic relationships or where the accused was known to the victim. 16 of the accused sexual abuses were under the age of 18. The offenses recorded are 384 rapes, 10 attempted rapes, 8 assaults with intent to rape, 3 abductions with an intent to rape, 12 indecent assaults, 5 cases of incest, 6 defilements and an alarming 94 sexual assaults. From May last year, the DPP has seen rape and other sexual offenses fluctuate from month to month. It boomed in August, recording 57 offenses but dropped in September and continued to fluctuate from October to December. However, from 14 cases recorded in December, it jumped to 34 in January, increased by 20 cases to 54 in February before it fell in March. Sexual offenses increased again to 32 in April before it increased drastically to 72 cases last month. Akusita Tali, FBC News. The Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority has collected $80 million in penalties from tax evaders. With investigations ongoing, FERCA is expected to collect more than $150 million from tax evaders for this financial year. Kelly Vavala reports. Tax evasion remains a major challenge for FERCA as several people and businesses have been audited and penalized. Majority of them had to pay high penalties. At the moment, as at to date, uh, in this current financial year, we have uh, uh, collected uh, up to $80 million uh, from taxes that were not being paid. And there are a number of cases still open. And uh, back in 2006, the uh, tax loss from black economy was $716 million. And uh, of course, at that time, the revenue being uh, one third of what we collect now, so we can uh, uh, estimate the evasion uh, that's happening, that's still out there. 
Minister for Economy Aya Swad Kayum says tax evasion does not help in the country's development and it can tremendously affect economic growth. We want businesses to make money, we want them to make a revenue, we want them to do the investments. But however, if the system is such where the system allows for people to skew it, then the benefits of what the government is doing, the various initiatives, will not get passed on to everybody else. It does not actually lead to economic development, economic growth, and more importantly, it does not empower individual Fijians. Certainly, uh, combined with our initiatives and uh, the salary increase that FECA has uh, gotten, I think we, are, we have the right uh, recipe to deal with this uh, issue now. FECA Chief Executive Vishwanatha says some people are not paying their taxes despite numerous warnings, and non-compliant taxpayers will have to face the full brunt of the law. Kelly Vadvala, FBC News. Fiji Roads Authority contractors will rectify projects at their own cost if the work is not up to FRA's expectation. This was confirmed to FBC News by the Chief Executive John Hutchinson, saying that no taxpayer's money is spent when contractors are required to redo projects. Sainiani Boiler reports. The FRA is responsible for monitoring, supervising and managing all road maintenance and has a certain standard for contractors to meet. All of our contractors um, uh, endeavour to do the best that they can, um, but uh, clearly at times um, it's uh, an issue for us uh, to manage and uh, we're doing that appropriately. And where we find areas of uh, poor performance, uh, we hold the contractors to account. Hutchinson says the FRA is monitoring their performance and will require work to be redone by contractors at their own cost and resources if it is not up to standards. People uh, make comment that uh, they see the contractor back there fixing the same pothole or whatever. Yes, that does occur, but I'd just like to reassure the public that the contractor is doing it in his time and his money, not on the publics. The public feedback has been mixed when it comes to projects done by FRA contracts so far. Nothing progress happening on the road. Don't know what kind of progress they're doing. Contractors, they are doing a good job. They, they, are, they are not doing their job well because my place in Lakasi is still plenty portals there. FRA has used approximately 60 contractors and consultants since 2013. 73% of those companies are locally owned. Sainiani Mboila, FBC News. Still to come, Fiji's elderly population on the rise. And Women's Expo takes on Green Agenda. Details after the break. Nimbula Vinaka, Naya Langunga, Andi Moala, Rada, Ranalika. Fiji's elderly population is growing and requires care. According to the Minister for Women, Children and Poverty Alleviation, Merisene Vuniwanga, Fiji's older population is growing by 3,000 people per year and is expected to grow from 69,300 in 2010 to 150,000 by 2050. Savaira Tambo reports. All walks of life gathered at the Albert Park in Suwa this morning to mark World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. It involves activities to highlight the plight of the elderly, especially the ill treatment of older adults wherever they live. Minister Mirasendi Buniwanga is adamant the day aims to highlight the need for appropriate remedial action. At the Second World Assembly on Aging, held in Madrid, Spain, in 2002, Secretary General Kofi Annan released a World Health Organization report which notes that in some cases, Mistreatment of older persons may be part of a broader landscape of poverty, structural inequalities, and other human rights abuse. I'm glad it has been started at a national scale uh, because the elderly abuse is very rife in Fiji. Lovely. I am very thankful to the Almighty as well as the government for providing such an initiative. 
Raising awareness is a fundamental prevention strategy that involves not only sharing information but also helping to change attitudes and behavior. It's quite unfair. In fact, I think it's an it's a act of uh, uh, inhumanity you know, to, to neglect them. The number of older persons in senior citizens' homes changes on a daily basis. At the moment, we have 126 residents in state homes and 74 older persons residing in private residences for the elderly. Sabera Tambua, FBC News. 27 people suffering from congenital heart problems have received new leases on life. These patients include 12 children and 15 adults have undergone free open heart surgery at the CWM hospital in Suva since Sunday. Pranita Prakash has more. A team from the Open Heart International have been coming to Fiji for the last 24 years and will carry out the 800th surgery this year. So the surgeries that we focus on during this week are the congenital problems with the children. So children who are born with something that's not quite right with their heart and during that time um, they're not growing properly and, and they need to um, have an operation to fix that. And once that operation's done they will be relatively well after that and go on to lead a normal life. The team will conduct 35 surgeries and five-year-old Vevlin Vandana of Bulile Kalambasa is among those children who have had their surgeries. I'm a market vendor and one day when I came home my mother-in-law said Vandana is sick and we had to take her to the hospital where she was admitted and diagnosed. I'm very grateful because if we had to finance a surgery we would have had to arrange a fundraising. Atelini Rikoriko of Nandi is grateful that her two-year-old daughter will now live a normal life. The surgery go well and it didn't cause any trouble. So I thank the Almighty that she's alive. These surgeries, which cost $50,000 in Australia, are conducted through a partnership between the Ministry of Health and Open Heart International. Ranita Prakash, FBC News. The National Women's Expo hit its second day today and while the homeware was selling off the table, there were a number of side events aimed at educating the artisans on social services. With the theme, Be Empowered, Be the Change, the National Expo has also taken on a green agenda. Maggie Boyle tells us more. From the immaculate tapestries to the dance floor, the women from Rotuma leading the festivities. The National Expo also took on the concept of a one-stop shop, allowing these rural women to access services they wouldn't otherwise. We have a few of the banks here, and the services that the banks offer is to, um, uh, if they don't have bank accounts, there's a possibility of opening new bank accounts, uh, having transactions with the banks, and also a um, uh, possibility of uh, small loans. For some of the vendors, it's a welcome opportunity. We went to find out uh, for FDV, for a small business, eh? just if they can assist us. Please, you can make money from your leftover saris, your leftover materials, you have it at home. There's even a forum to get in on the Save Our Oceans campaign, with voluntary commitments proving popular. So the spawning season for cow cow Indon is from June to September every year. and. Um, they, you know, a lot of them have come out to pledge. Well, here at the National Women's Expo, it's more than about selling those amazing wares. It's also about a green agenda, taking the pledge to ensure that you don't catch or buy donu or kawakawa during its spawning season. It's also about learning more about ocean health and what we can do for a better environment. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. We now join Maggie live. Maggie, with the expo coming to an end tomorrow, how has it been so far? Bulabanaka, Jackie, and good evening. We're here at the National Women's Expo. <laughs> As you can hear, the crowd behind us, of course, are very excited. It's been a really good day two of the National Expo. Already, sales have surpassed the 100,000 mark, and in 2015, it hit 300,000. Now, of course, we're here with the manager for the field services from the Ministry of Women, Salai Korobusere. Salai, uh, the 497 women here, and other than the amazing products that they've bought, there is a special incentive for their business. Okay. For us, um, the, uh, one of the incentives is getting licensed under the 3G and Data anthem. Uh, 
and that's what we're hoping to do here. We're bringing them out of their, uh, the rural areas, bringing them into Suva, and we're hoping to market them, market their products, and also market themselves as, uh, as uh, artisans uh, to, to a national level and also at an international level. So basically, more than 50 women have been identified already. That number could go up. They're going to get Fiji-made licenses, allowing them to expand what they make at home and that skill, taking it to a bigger platform to sell. Tomorrow, of course, is the last day of the expo. So if you haven't come down already, come on down and see what's on offer. There's a, quite the variety. Jackie. Absolutely fantastic. Thanks so much for that, Maggie. The Indian High Commission, together with the Education Ministry, will be hosting World Yoga Day scheduled for the 21st of this month. Education Minister Dr. Mahindra Reddy says yoga is an invaluable gift of ancient Indian tradition that discovers the sense of oneness with ourselves, the world and nature. More than 3,000 students are expected to be part of the celebration with the support of private sector and non-government organizations. Ahead in sports with Jamie, he'll have the latest on the Flying Fijians, but joining us next is Rachel with Business. Thank you, Jacqueline. Good evening and coming up in business tonight. Tapu's launches new Fijian rugby apparel. And in going Fiji, FEA works on solar plant in Nandi. Stay with us. Whenever I want to tune in to listen to great music, I always tune in to my favorite radio station, Gold FM, only the classic. My name is Lita. We love listening to Gold FM here at the Fiji Hideaway Resort and Spa. Gold FM, only the classic hits. We here at Tano Waterfront Lotoka love listening to Gold FM, only, only the, the classic, classic hits. hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Welcome back. Leading business tonight, the Fiji Rugby Union today launched its new design apparel. The Vodafone Flying Fijians wore the new ISC design jerseys against Australia last week. Players from the extended squad were part of the launch today as fans at Tapu City got a glimpse of their stars. Five lucky fans also won autographed jerseys at the launch. We've turned around a range in about four or five weeks, which has been uh, quite fantastic. Um, and alongside that, obviously, all our range here that you see here today is all designed locally. Um, our jerseys are all made locally, our training gear is made locally, the singlets, the tees, the polos. One of the challenges we had issued IAC was if they could ensure that the Flying Fijians in their match against Australia were kitted with an IAC kit. And I must thank uh, IAC for living up to expectation and for supplying the team with their kits. And we now join Savanada from HFC Bank with the latest from the stock markets. Big market moves today, Rachel. This morning, the United States Federal Reserve increased its interest rate yet again this year from 1% to 1.25%. However, this was overshadowed by the U.S. retail sales for the month of May that fell to zero, negative 0.3% from 0.4% when they expected to reduce to 0.1%. Also, their consumer price index for the month of May dropped further than expected from 2.2% to 1.9%. The U.S. dollar opened 19 points weaker against our Fijian dollar today. Off the back of a weaker U.S. dollar, the Australian dollar opened 21 points stronger this morning and went up further 22 points during the day after favorable Australian unemployment and participation figures. That's it for me right now. Binaka, Rachel. Thanks, Savanada. Let's take a look at today's exchange rates. The Fijian dollar continues its upwards trend into its third day to strengthen against the Chinese yuan and the American dollar closing at 3.23 and 47 cents respectively. Closer to home, our dollar went up against the Australian and New Zealand dollar to close at 62 and 64 cents, while it strengthened against the PNG Kina closing at 1.33. As for the commodities market, oil prices dropped to close at 44.70 a barrel. Gold followed suit, closing at 1,263 an ounce. And silver weakened, closing at 16.95 an ounce. 
And in Goin Fiji tonight, the Fiji Electricity Authority is developing a new grid-connected solar energy plant in Geleloa Nandi. This project is expected to generate 5 megawatts of solar energy for the town. Here's more details. FEA has set a target to become 90% renewable by 2025. This is also in line with government's vision to be 100% renewable by 2030. We have purchased uh, 34, 34 acres of land in Gerlo to install uh, 5 megawatts of solar. So that's uh, uh, the way FEA is progressing this year. The authority is currently in discussion with shortlisted prospective bidders to further this plan. It will be clean energy, clean environment, and we'll be, uh, we'll be sure that we'll achieve our target. The plan would mean the people of the surrounding areas will receive a secured energy source. I think it's a good idea. It will be much cheaper to use, much safer as well, I would say. We don't have to use fuel anymore. I think it is a great idea. and. Uh... It will be an eco-friendly system. It's very good. People are staying in the interior and it's not really rich people to afford the power, you know, electricity. While if uh, solar energy, they can save a lot. The project is expected to commence later this year with an estimated completion of 6 to 12 months. And that's your business news this evening. Spots is up next. Jamie, tell us what the build-up is like and how is it going for the first home test for the year? All right, so both the, the match day team has been named and we'll have the latest from both camps after the break. But also coming up, we talk to two players in the Flying Fijians who will shoulder a lot of responsibility against the visitors. Also up ahead, Nandi worried about match fitness ahead of Fiji Fact Semis. This and more coming up. Vodafone Flying Fijians coach John McKee has made five changes and two positional switches to the starting lineup to face Italy on Saturday. In the front row, McKee has shifted Penny Ravai to the loose head prop and has brought in Topati Talmai Tonga at hooker, while Kalivati Tawake gets his starting game as tight head prop. Apisai, Ratuni Arawa and Nemani Nangusa also start, while Serupupeli, Vularika and Eroni Vasiteri are the newcomers in the back line. Meanwhile, coach John McKee says he has been impressed with the performance of the new players he included into the game day squad. Despite his high expectations, McKee believes the players will deliver against the powerful Italy side on Saturday. Rashnil Prasad reports. A big call for Nandronga centre Eroni Vasiteri, who will combine with young Charlie Vatambua in the midfield for the Flying Fijians. Eroni has been excellent, excellent through the camp and, and excellent in the, in the Skipper Cup leading up to that. So, you know, Roni d deserves to get an opportunity. It has not been an easy task for coach John McKee to name his final 15. Last week's second half performance by Seru Pepeli Vularika has given him the starting nod ahead of Nicola Matawalu. Competition amongst the halfbacks and, you know, Seru, we thought last week, you know, gave us really good delivery and it helped our momentum at the back end of the game last week. You know, that, that, you know we're looking for that, that quick delivery from the rucks. Maki has also been impressed with Huka to a party Talemai Tonga who returns to the squad. He was outstanding at tight head last week, you know, will move to his more custom position at loose head this week. And, and to a party, you know, also, you know, a player who who, you know, he's been on the bench for us a little bit in the last last couple of campaigns, but you know, he he really showed in the second half last week that he deserves an opportunity to start. Loose head prop Penny Ravai says he's looking forward to partnering Suvers Kalivati Tawake. It's no difference. Kali is a strong man. He's pretty good in local, so he's done best on Australia games. So I think it's no different compared to Manas. 
I think he'll done the job and Topad is uh, one of the senior players so I think he's very, really mature for us. It's time for the players to perform as the competition is expected to get tougher next week with the inclusion of Joshua Tuisova, Patrick Osborne and Pedeli Yato. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Once again, we join Vashil Prasad live from the Fiji team camp, and he's with uh, skipper Akapusingera Vashnil. You heard already from coach John Mackey on uh, the lineup that is that was named today, and here with me is the man who lead the pack on the field against Italy, Akapusingera. Thank you, thank you very much. And uh, uh, lineup uh, named with uh, front rows uh, Singh Penny Ravai there. Uh, Sonia Koto and Kempisi Mafu out and big call for uh, Kalitawake and Topati Talimaitonga. Oh, it's, a, it's a good team uh, been uh, been named by the coach and uh, he's put all his trust in this uh, in this team and uh, and I have faith in them too as well to uh, put out a performance that everyone will be happy of and especially for them too as well. You are also moving originally to your own uh, place at open side uh, flanker and also uh, with a new combination in the backs in, in the midfield with Chale, Vatambua and uh, Eroni Vasiteri. Yes, it's important to get a, a good combination uh, building up to the uh, World Cup qualifying and uh, changes will need to be done and uh, it's been done for this week's game and uh, we, 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 are, we, are, we are hoping that uh, we'll come through. ANZ has been all the, uh, always the favourite ground for uh, flying Fijians against Italy, four out of four so far. You know, going for the fifth one uh, uh, this year. This year, and what's your message to the fans and the public of Fiji? Oh, that's uh, that's a uh, that's a record that we uh, we love to uh, maintain. And uh, just my message to the fans out there in Fiji, all over Fiji and uh, in the islands, is uh, to support your team and uh, support the flying Fijians as they uh, go into battle on uh, Saturday at the ANZ Stadium. There you go, a call from the captain to come in numbers and support the flying Fijians when they take on Italy to help them and get the fifth win here at the ANZ Stadium. Jamie. Uh, senior players in the Flying Fijians say they're enjoying building the team with the younger players who joined the national squad recently. Timothy Nangusa and Veriniki Ngoneva may be regarded as old horses, but the experience is second to none, and this knowledge they hope to pass on to the new reps. Vashnil Prasad reports. France-based Timothy Nangusa is raring to go against the Italians in the first home test of the year. Uh, for me, it's, uh, it's just a great pleasure and honor to, to wear the Fiji jersey all the time. Even though uh, the French uh, competition was very long, 11 months, uh, that does not uh, take away the, the hunger and uh, and uh, the want to play for the to, to play for Fiji. Fiji's backline contains a mixture of youth and experience, and Nangusa believes this is the right opportunity to test the combinations for the future. One's looking after the challenge, especially the young boys like uh, Chale. We have a new combination, Charlie with the Roni. Uh, so we, we're building for uh, the bigger games here to come. Another player who has been a vital member of the side is Veroniki Ngoneva, who knows too well what the Azuris will bring to the park. They know the flying feature and the, you know, we, we, we can run the ball. So I think for them, uh, maybe they can uh, they use their forward pack. And, uh, and for us as well, we are, we are looking forward for the big challenge. Coach John Maki has named a few new combinations in the team, but experienced players like Nangusa and Goneva are ready to take the leading roles this weekend. New uh, combination for this week, but uh, I know it's it's not it's not a big issue. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm playing wing this week, and uh, we just um, work together, and uh, and uh, we still have the same mindset for for get uh, the victory this week. INZ Stadium has been the happy hunting ground for the flying Fijians. However, once the team runs onto the field, history will count for nothing, as all that will matter for our flying Fijians will be the 80 minutes of brutal rugby. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Italy head coach Conor O'Shea has also named his final team for the game. 34 cap veteran flanker Francesco Minto will captain the visitors, while Dean Dad and Luca Bigi will make their debuts. Despite having won five games apiece, the Italians have never, never beaten Fiji at home. It's all about flair, and they don't look at the strength of the pack, and they don't look at how much the scrum has improved and how much the set play has improved. But it's the typical Fijian, you know, Fijian rugby is about sevens, it's about ball handling. Yes, it is, but it's about so much more. And Italian rugby is about our strength, which is our scrum, and it's our mall, but it's about so much more. The rugby side has to make a lot of changes if it wants to return to the Skipper Cup competition. It's being dropped to the B Division following a disappointing performance this season. Elna Turangaview reports. 
Six losses in six games so far this season. A rather dismal performance for many who have been following the Madhuwata rugby team. This is caused by the weak leader shown by the Madhuwata rugby union. They should seriously look at making changes there. If the Madhuwata team, they try hard, if they train hard and focus on the game, they'll do. They'll do good. I'm not really surprised to that. Uh, what the FRU must uh, concentrate on is to focus on club level. Madhuwata made it to the top eight of the Skipper Cup competition last year. However, they failed to improve their point standing this year. Technical advisor Levadi Ndingitaki believes there are a few factors that contributed to this, one of which is the lack of preparation before the tournament started. That is the most important, most important thing, this off-season training program, because some of the things that uh, the players have to go through, power, strength, it has to be uh, done. Groundwork has to be done. With only eight teams, and if you don't have proper preparation prior to the tournament, you know, you're just going to be on the receiving end week in, week out. Dingitaki, who only recently joined the Madhuwata Rugby Union, believes, like all other major teams, there is an abundance of talent in the Madhuwata side. The only drawback for them is the coaching level. First, we do analysis for the, for the team. We do profiling for the team. We do profiling for the head coach. The Madhuwata side plays Nandronga in its last game of the season this Saturday. Eleanor Turangaibu, FBC Sports. The Nandi football side says the four-week break has affected the team ahead of the semi-finals of the Vodafone Fiji Fact this weekend. The last round of pool games were played mid last month and since then, with no recent football action for its players, the Jet Setters say match fitness will be a major factor. Rohit Deo with the story. Defending champions of the Vodafone Fiji Fact, Nandi are not too pleased with the long break they have had since the pool games. The one-month break was due to the international outing by the national team. The break really affected like it was two weeks break. It's like now we're going just to a format to finish the tournament. It's nothing much to go and win no? because boys are walking in the hotels. Mostly our, majority of our boys are walking in the hotels. They're hotel workers. So they don't have a day break to do the training in the daytime. On a positive note, striker Napoleon Ngase Vakatini is back training with the team. Yeah, he's recovering. We saw the doctor. And so he started training today. Let's see these two days how he performs. He can be in first lineup or maybe he's resting in the bench. Rusiate Matarurenga has played for Suva before and knows what to expect from the opponents. We respect Suva a lot. Uh, they are the only team that uh, beat the, the undefeated uh, Lotaka team in this uh, season so far. And uh, they are a very good side uh, with their new officials and uh, coaching staffs. Nandi meets Suva at 4.30 p.m. at Nosori Zatu the Kambau Park on Saturday after Rewa plays Lambasa at 2 p.m. The winners face off in the final at 2.30 p.m. on Sunday. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. That's it from Sports this evening. Catch weather later on with Angie and the new media. A look at how viewership of drama shows on the internet has grown by 40% in China. Stay with us. Bola, In new media tonight, China's major video platforms have been swift to follow this business model. The amount of internet dramas increased over 40% last year. They differ from traditional TV shows in that they cover a wider variety of genres. Angie joins us now with the latest in weather. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. We saw beautiful sunny skies to start off our day and it continued throughout in most parts of the country. Just when you thought the weather had changed, 
change, it just keeps staying beautiful. Looking at today in the west, the sun spread vi vibrancy across many areas and conditions weren't that muggy, which is a good thing. Eastwards from Pek Haba to Suva, white scattered clouds were floating by in the clear blue skies with light afternoon showers. And up in Vanualevu, there was a mixture of sun and cloudy periods. At sea, southeast winds 20 to 25 knots with rough to very rough seas. And for the tides, high tide tonight will be at 11.06 with a low tide tomorrow morning at 5.05. Sunrise will be at 6.35. For tomorrow, it's the mighty Friday and conditions are looking fine apart from few light occasional showers. Tomorrow's stand, Suva will be even cooler than today at 24 degrees. And looking ahead to Saturday, the same conditions are likely to continue. And that, Jackie, is FBC weather for tonight. Thanks so much for that, Angie. On Fiji and Pulse today, we asked, should sex education be introduced into the school curriculum? Um, I think no, because uh, when it causes a lot of teenage pregnancy and uh, it can be taught at home so that parents can inform them so that they can be aware of it. Yes, suppose we taught at school. That is a better way to, if the children they can learn. I believe parents at home should be the first people to teach their kids about sex education. They should break the tumble of not talking about it. I think uh, sex education should be uh, included in schools to cope with the uh, issues of uh, teenage pregnancies. Yes, because uh, it's a major issue for uh, all the young girls and young, young people. Recapping the main stories, trial of alleged sex priest continues. FERCA rakes in over $80 million from tax evaders and FRA to monitor contractors and their work. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question this week, we are asking, can the Vodafone flying Fijians beat Italy and Scotland? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, today's shot of the day is all about the big rugby test on Saturday between Fiji and Italy. This shot taken by Vasu sets the perfect scene for the match up as the Flying Fijians wrapped up the training today ahead of the game. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight from the team and I. Good night. Radio Fiji 1 and Radio Fiji 1 